Now in this lecture we will discuss about kinetic theory of gases. Question is why gases behave ideally? That is why gases follow PV is equals to NRT equation. So basically we have a observation that is gases follow ideal gas behavior and then we are looking for a theory. So theory kinetic theory of gases is able to explain the ideal behavior of gases. the ideal behavior of gases. Like other theories, this theory also has some assumptions. An important assumption we have it assumes that a given sample consists of tiny spherical spheres this is basically molecules and they all have same size same shape same mass so all gas molecules are having same size having same shape and same mass. Molecules are always in random motion. That is motion is not defined. third point we have these molecules can have two kind of collision one molecule can collide with the molecule another molecule can collide with the wall so there are two kind of collision first one is between molecule and molecule And the second collision we have that is ba between ball of the container and molecule and theory assumes all collisions are elastic. So either we have molecule molecule or we have molecule ball, all collision are elastic in nature. So when we say elastic collision, this means during collision momentum is conserved and energy is conserved. For the present purpose, we can simply say if a molecule is going with Vx velocity, when this collides with wall, it will return with the same velocity Vx. It is a case of elastic collision. So this is a ball. So in case of elastic collision, it will return with the same velocity. 
another assumption we have that is volume of molecule is zero compared to the volume of container so we are assuming these values are zero so volume of molecule is zero compared to volume of container another assumption we have that gas molecule does not apply any kind of attractive forces or repulsive forces so there is no force of interaction so no force of interaction between two molecule next point we have that theory assumes that is pressure inside a container is due to collision so this is collide shear then this collide shear then this collide shear so pressure is due to so pressure inside this container is due to collision of molecule with container ball ball of container next assumption we have for these gas molecules newton's law is applicable so newton's law of motion motion is applicable and the last one we have that is average kinetic energy of these molecules is directly proportional to temperature of gas average kinetic energy of gas molecule is directly proportional to that is we can write average kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature is directly proportional to temperature so this sign denotes average so this sign kinetic energy bar this sign denotes average so these are the assumption we have for kinetic theory of gases now we can use this assumption to derive ideal gas equation ideal gas equation can be derived let us take a cube and this cube has a length of l so side length is l this length is also l now a molecule is moving in this direction with a velocity of vx 
Now this molecule will collide with this ball and then it will return back. Since the collision is elastic, it will return with the same velocity Vx. So we are considering a molecule 1. This is a velocity, let us say V1 or let us say V. We can break this velocity into three component Vx, Vy, Vz. That is V is equals to Vxi plus Vyz plus Vzk. Now let us first discuss velocity in x direction Vx. So what is the initial momentum? Mass of molecule is m. This direction is positive. So initial momentum of molecule this is equals to m times Vx. Now when this is returning after collision so we can write final momentum of molecule that is minus m Vx. Final means after collision. So we can say change in momentum this is equals to final momentum minus initial momentum. Final momentum is mvx with minus sign. Initial momentum is mvx so this is minus 2 mvx. So this is change in momentum that is minus 2 mvx. Now what is the average time for one collision? So one we can consider this molecule this goes from here then collide then come back to here. So let us say if I say cross sectional view of this cube this molecule is starting colliding returning then collide again and then return back. So what is the time required for this complete trip? So molecule is going from here to here and then from here finally it is here. So time required for one trip that is distance by velocity distance is L plus L 2L divided by velocity in this direction we have Vx that is 2L by Vx. Now in this trip basically we have two collision one collision with this wall another collision with this wall. So this is the time for two collision. So we can write time required for one collision. And this is equals to 2L by Vx divided by 2 that is L by Vx. Now we can find average momentum transferred to this wall is minus 2 mvx. So we can find force. We have Newton second law force external is dp by dt. So change in momentum of this molecule is minus 2 mvx and time average time is L by vx. So this is minus 2 m vx square by L. So this is force on molecule because this is momentum change of molecule. So now we can apply Newton's third law. And this says force acts with equal and opposite direction magnitude. So you have 
the same force is applied on the wall also so force applied on the wall this is plus 2m bx square by L now this is the force by the molecule velocity in x direction similarly we can apply we can calculate forces to the wall by other component of velocities so that will become 2 m v y square by L another will become 2 v z square by L into m so we can write total force on the wall this is 2 m by L one time we will have Vx square Vy square Vz square now Vx square plus Vy square plus Vz square is simply V square so now we know a formula force by one molecule force by molecule with velocity v and this is equals to 2m by L into v square now let us say container contains n number of molecules and their velocities are u1 u2 u3 u4 u5 un so u1 u2 are the velocities of molecule so we can calculate total force by all molecule one mole apply a force of 2 m by L V square so for one we will have u1 square for next we will have u2 square up to u n square now here we define a term that is u r m s so let us divide this by n and multiply by n where n is the number of molecule in gas sample we define root mean square velocity and this is defined as VRMS is equals to U1 square plus U2 square UN square by N under root now see name is basically in the reverse direction so we have to square the velocity first so you have u1 square u2 square un square and then we have to take mean that is u1 square plus u2 square plus un square by n and then we have to take root so this is finally root mean square velocity so this value now here we can see this term is basically a square of vrms so we can write force on wall this is 2m by L VRMS whole square into N now we can calculate pressure on the wall this is force by area 2m by L VRMS whole square into N and total surface area is 6 L square you see total surface area of cube so it has 6 faces and each face has area is L into L L square so 6 faces total area is 6 L square so we can write pressure on wall this is equals to 2 M by L V R M S whole square into n divided by 6 L square 
so we can write pressure is equals to so two cancels 1 by 3 and b r m s whole square into n by 6 by 3 and this is l q l q is nothing but volume of q So we can write P is equals to 1 by 3 m into n V R M S whole square divided by volume. Now this term can also be written as in a different way m is mass of each molecule and n is the number of molecule. So this means m into n is the mass of gas. So we can say m into n by v that is mass by volume this is density let us write rho that is density of gas. So same expression can be written as p is equals to 1 by 3 rho b r m s whole square. Now let us take this term again. So we have P is equals to 1 by 3 B R M S whole square into N divided by V or we can rearrange then we will have P V is equals to 1 by 3 V R M S whole square into N. We will also have mass, so there is a mass now we will use the last assumption that is average kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature. So what is average kinetic energy? Molecule one will have kinetic energy half m u one square half m u two square half m u n square this divided by n this is average kinetic energy now average kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature so let us take half common here m so we will have u1 square u2 square u n square divided by n so this is average kinetic energy this is proportional to temperature now this term is nothing but V R M S. So we will have half M V R M S whole square. This is basically V R M S whole square is equals to K dash times T. So where we have K dash is a constant. So from here we can write V R M S whole square is equals to 2 k dash t divided by mass. Now let us plug the value of VRMS in this equation. So we will have PV is equals to 1 by 3 m into VRM whole square into n mass cancels. So we will have PV is equals to 1 by 3 or 2 by 3 k dash into n into t. So you see we are very close to ideal gas equation. So we have p v we have t. We does not have n and r. So what we can do we can again modify this equation p v is equals to 2 by 3 k dash let us divide by our gather number and multiply by our gather number. So from here we have n by n is number of mole 2 by 3 k dash number of mole into n a into t. So we will have p v is equals to now 2 by 3 is constant k dash is constant so we can write this constant is a new constant k 
so we have 2 by 3 into k dash is a new constant k into Avogadro number into n into t now Avogadro number is a constant k is a constant so we can define further a new constant k into n a is equals to r r is gas constant now basically k is called Boltzmann constant k is equals to r by n a So from here we can write PV is equals to K into N is R into N into T. So we have PV is equals to NRT. So from assumptions of kinetic theory of gases and applying Newton's law we can derive kin uh, ideal gas equation. So this is ideal gas equation. We can derive ideal gas equation. So in this lecture we discuss different hypothesis that is assumptions and then we will discuss how we can prove PV is equals to NRT using kinetic theory of gases.